Good morning. Today is Sunday, the 3rd of April, and it's the fifth week in Lent. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. For the readings this Sunday, because Father Paul in our parish has chosen them, he's chosen the alternative readings of, the, of year A rather than year C. So it's all to do with the gift of life and the raising of Lazarus. If, so if you're following in a Universalis or in some other missal, look at year A rather than year C. By your help we beseech you, Lord our God, that we walk eagerly in the same charity with which, out of love for the world, your Son handed himself over to death. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God for ever and ever. Amen. First reading is from the prophet Ezekiel, chapter 37. The Lord says this, I am now going to open your graves. I mean to raise you from your graves, my people, and lead you back to the soil of Israel. And you will know that I am the Lord when I open your graves and raise you from your graves, my people. And I shall put my spirit in you, and you will live. And I shall resettle you on your own soil, and you will know that I, the Lord, have said and done this. It is the Lord who speaks. The word of the Lord. The second reading is from the letter of Paul to the Romans, chapter 8. People who are interested only in unspiritual things can never be pleasing to God. Your interests, however, are not in the unspiritual, but in the spiritual, since the Spirit of God has made his home in you. In fact, unless you possess the Spirit of Christ, you would not belong to him. Though your body may be dead, it is because of sin, and if Christ is in you, then your spirit is life itself, because you have been justified. And if the Spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead is living in you, then he who raised Jesus from the dead will give life to your own mortal bodies through his Spirit living in you. The Word of the Lord. In the Gospel of Gospel of John, chapter 11. There was a man named Lazarus who lived in the village of Bethany with the two sisters, Mary and Martha, and he was ill. It was the same Mary, the sister of the sick man Lazarus, who anointed the Lord with ointment and wiped his feet with her hair. The sisters sent this message to Jesus, Lord, the man you love is ill. On receiving the message, Jesus said, This sickness will not end in death, but in God's glory, and through the Son of God will, and through it the Son of God will be glorified. Jesus loved Martha and her sister and Lazarus, yet when he heard that Lazarus was ill, he stayed where he was for two more days before saying to the disciples, Let us go to Judea. The disciples said, Rabbi, it is not long since the Jews wanted to stone you. Are you going back again? And Jesus replied, Are there not twelve hours in the day? A man can walk in the daytime without stumbling, because he has the light of the world to see by. But if he walks at night, he stumbles, because there is no light to guide him. <clears throat> he said that, and then added, our friend Lazarus is resting. I'm going to wake him. The disciples said to him, Lord, if he's able to rest, he is sure to get better. The phrase Jesus used was referred to the death of Lazarus, but they thought that by rest he meant sleep. So Jesus put it plainly, Lazarus is dead, and for your sake I am glad. I was not there. I am glad I was not there, because now you will believe. But let us go to him. Then Thomas, known as a twin, said to the other disciples, Let us go too and die with him. On arriving, Jesus found that Lazarus had been in the tomb for four days already. Bethany is only two miles from Jerusalem, and many Jews had come to Martha and Mary to sympathize with them over their brother. When Martha heard that Jesus had come, she went to meet him. Mary remained in the house. Ma Martha said to Jesus, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. But I know that even now, whatever you ask of God, he will grant you. Your brother, said Jesus to her, will rise again. Martha said, I know he will rise again at the resurrection on the last day. And Jesus said, I am the resurrection and the life. If anyone believes in me, even though he dies, he will live. And whoever lives and believes in me will never die. Do you believe this? Yes, Lord, she said, 
I believe that you are the Christ, the Son of God, the one who was to come into the world. When she had said this, she went and called her sister Mary, saying in a low voice, The Master is here and wants to see you. Hearing this, Mary got up quickly and went to him. Jesus had not yet come into the village. He was still at the place where Martha had met him. When the Jews who were in the house sympathised with Mary, saw her get up so quickly and go out, they followed her, thinking she was going to the tomb to weep there. Mary went to Jesus, and as soon as she saw him, she threw herself at his feet, saying, Lord, if you'd been here, my brother would not have died. At the sight of her tears and those of the Jews who followed her, Jesus said in great distress with a sigh that came straight from the heart, Where have you put him? And they said, Lord, come and see. Jesus wept, and the Jews said, See how much he loved him. But there were some who remarked, He opened the eyes of the blind man. Could he not have prevented this man's death? Still sighing, Jesus reached the tomb. It was a cave with a stone to close the opening. Jesus said, Take the stone away. Martha said to him, Lord, by now he will, be, he will smell. This is the fourth day. Jesus replied, Have I not told you that if you believe, you will see the glory of God? They took away the stone. Then Jesus lifted up his eyes and said, Father, I thank you for hearing my prayer. I knew indeed that you always hear me, but I speak for the sake of those who stand round me, so that they may believe it was you who sent me. When he had said this, he cried in a loud voice, Lazarus, here, come out. The dead man came out, his feet and hands bound with bands of stuff and a cloth round his face. Jesus said to him, Unbind him, let him go free. Many of the Jews who had come to visit Mary and had seen what he did, believed in him. The Gospel of the Lord The readings are long today, but they make the points well, and I will dwell on them briefly. First reading, one from Ezekiel, is the great vision of the Valley of Dry Bones, and the Spirit of God comes, put fleshes, puts flesh on the bones, and brings them all back to life. And this is seen not only as a promise of the resurrection of Israel, um, right now it's they're all in exile and there's no hope of the future, and this is a promise of the future, um, that there will be new life and resurrection. And the second reading from Romans is about how the Spirit of God gives life, and that even though you die, the Spirit of God is in you, and therefore you will have eternal life, if you lead a life close to God in this world. The Gospel is the heart of today's message. It's the long Gospel from John, all about this great sign of Jesus. Jesus did six, seven signs in John's Gospel, showing who he was, what he came for, and what he can do. And this one in particular shows that he comes from the Father, has authority over life and death, and is particularly glad that Lazarus is not there when Lazarus gets ill and dies, because he says, I will be able to, through this, show you that uh, I will lead to my glory through my resurrection, and I can give you the power that I've been given by the Father by raising uh, Lazarus from the dead. And that's what he does. We have the wonderful affirmation of faith by Martha, but she's not sure that um, Jesus will raise her brother from the dead back to life, ordinary life. It's important to note that although the scriptures always talk about when we die and rise again to eternal life, uh, we will rise to a new form. We don't know what our bodies will be like or what the world will be like. But the raising of Lazarus is the raising of back to ordinary human life. So Lazarus will die again and eventually come to eternal life. We also have that very sardonic comment by Thomas who says, oh, we'll go down to Bethany uh, with Jesus, even though last time we were down in Jerusalem he came close to being arrested and put to death by the temple authorities. He says, well, let's go down and die with him. Not sure whether there's a, a sign of uh, sardonic uh, sarcasm or whether he really believed that they would die for him. 
But we do know in the end all the apostles, with the possible exception of John, who we think died in his old age, were all martyred and all died for Christ. So for today, our message is to ponder and believe Jesus is sent by God and he brings us eternal life and that after death, our death, there is further eternal life. We turn to our bidding prayers. The response is, Lord, create a new spirit within us. Let us bless our Redeemer who has brought us to this day of salvation. Lord, create a new spirit within us. Christ our life, we were buried with you in baptism to rise from the dead. Lead us this day along the new path of life. Lord, create a new spirit within us. You went everywhere, Lord, doing good for everyone. Help us to care for the coming common good of all. Lord, create a new spirit within us. Help us to work with other people to build the earthly city, but never let us lose sight of your heavenly kingdom. Lord, create a new spirit within us. Healer of souls and bodies, mend our broken lives. Let us receive all the blessings of your holiness. Lord, and create a new spirit within us. And we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Lord our God, your Son so loved the world that he gave himself up to death for our sake. Strengthen us by your grace and give us a heart willing to live by that same love. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God for ever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. Amen. Have a good day. Have a good week. Today is Sunday, the beginning of our new week. Bye.